Hey, hey developers, today we're going to talk about Vue 2.6. It was just released. I'm going to go over the release notes and we're going to look at Vue slots and the new syntax real quickly. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer with several years of software development experience. And if you're interested, I'm giving uh, the first chapter of my book, Vue.js in Action, away. You just need to click in the description below. I have a little link. Click on it, sign up for my mailing list, and uh, you won't be disappointed. All right, so if you don't know already, Vue has been going fast and furious, and with their releases lately, now they have hit their fifth Vue anniversary. Get it? Vue anniversary? Vue anniversary? Uh, yesterday uh, on February 3rd or February yep, February 3rd and now they have version 2.6 Macross out so you can see here they're working really hard they're getting ready for 3.0 and you know Vue CLI 3 is already out so they're eventually going to hit that as well in the Vue core and so one of the cool new things and we'll get back to this in a second is slots so we'll get back to that in a minute. They've done some performance improvements as you expect with Vue 2.6. They have add some async error handling. You can do, um, you, there's some new error capture and error handler hooks. Now you can do dynamic directives. This is pretty cool. And I'll show you an example when we do this with our Vue slots example, but you can see these little brackets here. And so what you can do is with these brackets, you can dynamically have this be created inside your component. So for example, this adder here could be, I don't know, like href, something like that, or or a name or something. And so that would add that attribute to this div tag. Obviously you wouldn't want to put in, you know, an href, but let's say it was a, an anchor tag. But basically you can dynamically create it here inside your component. So that's really neat. You can do the same thing with events. And then, uh, like I said, slot names, which I'll show you in a second. And then there's code frame and compiler warning messages, some more warning messages. There's, uh, you can do the standalone reactive objects. I'm not really sure what you would use this for, but it's kind of a cool new feature. They have some new server prefetching during server-side rendering. So like libraries like Vue Apollo, it's probably something that they would be using. I'm not sure if you would be using this in your Vue projects, unless you have a pretty complicated Vue app. ES module build for direct import. So different types of imports, um, if you're kind of doing different types of module imports, I, I suppose. And then they had some internal changes where they're taking like next ticks and micro tasks and scope slots now returns arrays. arrays. And then he has, he has this shout out. So it's cool that, uh, that things are, are moving along and that they're continually improving view and the core team members, you know, the core team is really doing a great job of just continuously putting out an awesome app. So I thought I would just take a look at one thing here. So I have my Visual Studio code open here and I have my index.html. So I will do a couple updates and then we'll just kind of take a look and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's start off and we'll just go ahead and create a really simple app. So I'm going to create HTML5 here, and we're just going to call it my test app. doesn't really matter. And then all the script. And then I'm going to add a source here, and that's going to equal just our unpackage.com slash Vue.js. And then just to make sure everything's working, we're just going to have a div ID of app. And we're going to call this... Uh, hello and then we'll have our script tag and then inside our script tag we'll just create a new view app and then in our new view app we'll have our element our entry point which we're going to have it be the app and just to make sure we're going to display our hello data and we're just going to return a uh, hello, which is going to equal hello world. So that's as easy as it is. If we re refresh it, oops, view is not defined. 
So we just need to see what we did wrong. Oops, it's actually just view here. Save it. There it is. So we get our hello world. Seems to be working. And you can see here down here detected view 2.6.3. So we know we are on the latest 2.6, which is cool. So now we can try some of these new things out. So first thing I wanted to show you guys is let's create a second component here. So I'm just going to create, I'm going to call it component A. And inside it, I'm going to have a data object. And it's going to return, I don't know, a name object. And in that, it's going to have a first name, Eric. It's going to have a last name, Panchet. And I just got a new keyboard, so it might be a little clicky. I apologize if it is. And then I'll do some string interpolation here. I'm going to create a div tag. And inside that div tag, we'll just do, well, let's do a header. And then inside the header, we'll just do a footer. And just to make sure this works. Oops, we'll do. Uh, header and then in here uh, footer and just to make sure we have it all correctly what we need to do now is we'll define it as a local component here and if you remember the syntax of that we'll just call comp a and we'll have that equal component a and then we can now access it here. So if we do comp A, and we'll save it here, and we refresh it, we get an error. Component A is not defined. Uh, let me make sure I include it inside our script tag. And I'll move it to above the component so it sees it right there okay so now we have our header we have our footer so you can see what I'm doing here is I have our main app and then I just have this component inside here and all it is is has a header and footer so if you remember correctly with slots so we'll show in a quick example of of a slot here so we can add in um, a slot by doing this. So if I put anything in between here, like this is content, and I save it, you can see here I see nothing on my screen, nothing changed. And you know, I'll just make this an H1 just for fun. So they're both the same size. But if I wanted to actually show it somewhere, I could just do something like this. I can just put in this slot and then closing slot. If I save it, now I have this as content. So it's displaying this information in here. Now there's something called name slots. You would create like a template, which I'll do here, template. And then you would do this slot equals and you put this name in. And if you wanted to do scope slots, you do like scope slot, I believe, and an equal. And it wasn't. Um, wasn't perfect. So what we can do and what you can do in 2.6 is a little different. So if you come down here, we can create a uh, basically a slot. So we're going to create a slot. We're going to put a name equals header. And then we're going to have slot. So what this is saying is whatever we put in this named slot, it'll go here. And then when we have this template here, we now use the new syntax, which is v dash slot, and then we put colon and then header. And then what that'll do is when this information gets, uh, this is the header, this information will actually get inserted into this part of the component. So let's see how that looks like. So I had a little bit of an error because I can't, I always forget the ending quotes there. I'll save it. Save it until it refines my changes. Let me save it. There we go. So this is the header. 
Uh, this is, I put it in right here. So I'll put it below the header so it makes a little more sense. So you can see here it's appearing in the header, which is cool. So now I use this V slot header syntax. So that's a little bit different than what it was before. And then if I wanted to create another slot for footer, I do the same thing. Footer, this is the footer. And then I can do another slot name here and I'll put it in the footer. I'll save it and I'll reload it. And now you can see here, now I have, this is the header, this is the footer. So this is, I think in some other um, frameworks it's called transclusion. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically taking stuff that I have from the parent component and inserting it into the child component, which is really cool. So if I wanted to even, so I could, I could, uh, if I could really take both these components of my parent and the child and just like interact different information, I can even, you know, I can even put this hello here if I wanted to. So if I did something like this, saved it, now I see my hello world. So it's grabbing the information. Now there's actually something that you can do with scope slots where you can pass information from the child component back up to the parent component. So that can be useful in certain situations. So I can go here and here is my child component. And I have this name, I have this first name and last name. So if I wanted to pass this into the, the component up here, I can do that a couple different ways. Uh, the easiest then is to use a uh, scope slot. So what I wanna do here is on this, let's say on this footer, I can do, let's call it, I don't know, name info, and I can pass in the name. And what this is doing, it's binding, it's basically like a, a scope prop. So I'm saying I'm binding the name name info into this name here. And if I save it, and I go back up here, now I have access to it. So I can do something like this. I can do footer equals, and then I can put in this new syntax, which is the single brackets, and then the name of it, which I passed in, which I call name info. And now I have access to it in here. So now I can do something like this. I can do double brackets, name info, dot first name. I'll save it. Now you can see here, this is the footer Eric. So it's, so now it passed in from the child component, which is right here, my first name into here. So now it's passed in to the, to the parent, which is really neat. And so you could take information and take the information from the parent and combine it with the child really easily. I could also do last name here. Last name, so now it's Hanchet. So if you look at the old way they did it, like I was saying, you would have to do two, you have to do slot, the name slot, and then slot scope, and then the, the um, message that you wanted to pass. But now you can combine it into one where you just do the colon, the name of the named scope, and then the message that you're passing, the passing in. So it just makes it a little bit cleaner uh, to do. Um, one other thing to note is now you can have dynamic at uh, dynamic slots and dynamic attributes. So what I could do instead of this header here, um, I can put this bracket around it and then name it something. Let's say I call it slot. And then inside the parent component, which is right up here. Oops, got to go to the bottom. The parent component, I can create a new one called slot. And I can call it header here. So now if I refresh it, still looks the same, but this is dynamically generated. So I can change this to footer. Let me do one thing here. So let me change that because we already had two slots named footer. So now it should work. Let's try it now. There it goes. Now this is the header. So now that works. So now I put this in header. This is the header. So cool. All right, so that's that's it. That's all I had to show you to guys today. So this is just a quick example of how we can use the new vslot syntax 
and we can dynamically generate our our slots. This is pretty advanced stuff when you when you start getting into this when when you start getting really complicated components that rely on other components and you have a lot of information in the parent component and a lot of information in the child component and you don't want to pass things, you, using slots makes things so much easier, trust me. I had to do it in an Angular project with ng content and wasn't as fun. So let me know what you guys think about the new updates with 2.6. Leave a comment below. Thanks.